There's a lot of talk about the role of corporations in our economy, but no one takes the time to explain how they work and what that means for you and me. This series, Corporations 101, does just that. Today we'll cover how U.S. companies operate in the international economy. At a basic level, an economy is created whenever someone produces a good or service that someone else wants to buy. Company A sells to customer B. But today, things aren't so simple. In addition to selling domestically, American companies have long needed to export goods to reach international customers. Today, with 95% of the world's customers outside our borders, American companies must export to, and also invest in, the countries where they're doing business. Having a strong local market presence is critical. You've probably noticed when you travel that many products are different than what you're used to at home. Companies today must tailor their products to meet local needs and compete effectively with foreign businesses. So, what does this mean for our simple A sells to B example? Today, customer B might live in a foreign country, say Australia. Our American company A sells tractors, but he has to compete with company C in Germany for B's business. You see, company C's tractor is made of biodegradable materials, which makes it a more attractive option for the eco-conscious B. Not to be outdone, company A begins manufacturing its tractors from sustainable material purchased from supplier D in Chile. A is now back in business with B, but here comes company E, which is also from Australia. This company begins selling a tractor that's just as green, but also has wheels specially adapted for the rugged Australian terrain. And once again, B is gone. So, where to now for company A? One way to win B's business back is for A to make investments in Australia to produce tractors that are more customized and affordable. As Company A invests more and more into its tractors, it must also find more customers besides just B. That means further expansion abroad through both exports and investments. This grows its U.S.-based operations and leads to several advantages for folks like us. First, there is the convenience and availability of new and better products, like the ability to buy seasonal produce in our local grocery stores all year round. Additionally, when American companies expand internationally through exports and investments, their success creates revenue that fuels expansion of their U.S.-based operations and fosters economic growth, fueling more revenue for government services and a stronger stock market, for example, and more well-paying jobs here at home. Today, more than one in five American jobs depend on this international activity. What's more, companies that compete internationally employ more than 22 million Americans and pay those workers about 20% more, roughly an extra $10,000 per year, than their domestic counterparts. While the changing international economy can seem confusing or even scary, it doesn't have to be. The worldwide economy is more than a challenge. It's our opportunity, too, for increased convenience, growth, jobs, and much more. Be sure to check back for future Corporations 101 episodes, where we will continue to explore how corporations work and what that means for us. Brought to you by Business Roundtable www.brt.org